welcome to my channel. I got a special request on buying a watchmaker's lathe. Um, I've got a few lathes and so I'm probably not an expert but I've bought a few lathes over the years and I just want to show you what I have here and, and the basic parts of the lathe. So, so if you look at the lathe what we have here um, the basic uh, lathe bed is, is this big massive piece of steel here. This is a Boley lathe, very high caliber German Boley lathe. And, and this is a this is the lathe bed here. Uh, the pedestal would normally be around here going down into the lathe, but I've actually bought a stand. Um, it's called a Burrell lathe stand. So I bought a lathe stand that allows me to put a counter shaft on this. Uh, like this. this is a very nice counter shaft. Um, and it's fully adjustable. On the back of the lathe, I've got it running on a sewing machine motor. So that's the basics that I have here. So that's the lathe there. Um, I'm going to be cheating a bit because I'm going to use a book. Let me show you what book I'm using. This is the Modern Watchmaker's Lathe and How to Use It. So it's a pretty cool book. It's got everything in there that you ever needed to know. So I'm going to just cheat a little tiny bit. And you can see it down there in the video. Um, or I could just move my camera a bit so you can't see that I'm cheating. But people like when I yap so I'm just gonna yap so so the lathe bed the pedestal the headstock is here this is the headstock very important part of the lathe the headstock and the tailstock is right here and then you've got the um, a tool rest I normally have a tip over tool rest which comes over this way this is just a tool rest it's adjustable but it's not a tip over so you can't get it out of the way I'll perhaps grab another lathe to show you a tip over tool rest after uh, you've got the headstock spindle and that's this right here. Uh, wait a second. We got it right. Yeah, right here is the headstock spindle right here. And this is machine. So this is a cone bearing in here, which means it's a cone going into another cone. So it's, if you look at two cones meeting, um, it's extremely accurate because it's a cone bearing and it requires oiling because of that, right? And this is the locking nut for the spindle here. And this comes off, actually. You can move that out of the way. And right in there is where you put oil for that, right? So in the type of oil I use is 0W20 synthetic oil, and I put it into a sewing machine oiler. So I just bought myself a sewing machine oiler, and I've got some 0W20 in there, and I've been using that for years, and it works fine. And then once you put the oil back in, you put the ring back on, and it's just a friction fit ring. It's split, split right here. Put it on and move it slightly out of the way so the hole is not showing. And you do exactly the same with the rear one here too. And this nut here um, is the adjustment nut for tightening the spindle. So you can actually tighten this in, inside so it doesn't rattle around in the lathe. So that's that. Let's see if I can, that's the locking, locking nut right there. Um, and then you've got the lathe pulley. So this thing here is the lathe pulley. And it has a, a pin here to lock it. And that's for positioning the lathe to, uh, if you're making, say, a watch stem, you would be cutting the watch stem and every 90 degrees you'd turn it another 90 degrees or 180 degrees to cut the other side and you'd be using files. So you got to make sure you have, you know, you'd have three different, four different positions for this and you could lock it in at those positions. Also, this is used for all kinds of other things, but the lathe itself is used for a boatload of things. I'm actually going to be um, making something in a lathe, I uh, think tomorrow, uh, tomorrow or the next day I'm going to be making uh, something in a lathe to replace uh, a plate, something on a plate, um, and push a push-in bearing on the lathe. So, so, so that, this here is the pulley. Um, you can actually repair these pulleys if you can get some a special type of cement that dries perfectly. You can, you can apply the cement and then file it down and actually repair any notches in the pulley. So if there's any imperfections in the pulley, I have done that. So I have pulleys that I have worked on that, that uh, I've done that too. And the lathe, um, the tool rest moves uh, in all positions here. So you can actually flip it, move it around and get it, get your work set proper. And I'm not going to do a, a, a video here on how to use a lathe. You've seen my videos on lathe youth before, use before. But when you go to buy a lathe, this is an eight millimeter lathe and it's a Webster Whittacombe type lathe, a WW you heard them called, and it's an eight millimeter, WW eight millimeter, and I believe eight millimeters from the bed up. So uh, I might be wrong there actually. So anyway, it's an eight millimeter lathe. I recommend you get an eight millimeter. They do sell six millimeter lathes, but the parts are not uh, 
really that accessible for for uh, your average Joe. So before I go too far, this is the draw-in spindle for the lathe, and your lathe chuck screws into that spindle on this side, so that spindle goes in this way. And when the chuck goes in, it goes in and it locks. So I'll show you how that locks in. You need to get yourself a set of chucks that cover all ranges for doing work. So you'll see a chuck, the chuck actually has a groove in it right here, and that groove aligns with a groove inside the spindle here. And so when you turn, when you take your you take this out like this and you turn it, you see, you're going to see where it hooks in. Just turn it until you feel it hooking in somewhere. Let me see if I can do this here. Uh, not yet, not yet. Got to move this around here. Of course, it never works when people are watching, right? Oh, there we go. So that's where the hook is. So there's a hook on the inside. It's a little peg on the inside. These are actually dust covers. I can't remember what I called them before, but they're dust covers for the oiler on the inside and the spindles in here, right? So so then once it's in position here, then this will screw into that chuck on the back. And when you screw that in, what it's gonna do is take the chuck on the end here and there's four parts of the chuck and it's gonna squeeze it in and compress it onto the part. So if you've got a part that you're putting into this lathe, I doubt if this is gonna fit, but if you've got a part you're putting in the lathe like that and you were to squeeze it down like this, then that would squeeze, squeeze that that part down to do, allow you to do the work, right? There are lathes, and I have one, that have got, um, uh, you can put a chuck in the in, in the tailpiece as well, and that gives you a lots of opportunity to do different kinds of work. You've, see, you've seen me do, make uh, uh, pivots for, uh, you know, for, for, for gears and stuff like that. Well, I have uh, a fitment that allows me to make pivots for lathe too. So it's important when you buy a lathe that you that these two pieces are from the same uh, manufacturer and in fact the same lathe. So if you can manage to identify the serial number on it, I'm not sure if this has a serial number in the back end, but sometimes they do. This one doesn't. Um, but if it does, that's great because it marks that that serial lo level on the WW lathe bed. Um, that will work perfectly with this and you want it to be absolutely centered so I've seen people that take a, uh, a needle or uh, the, the, a WW or sorry a uh, three taper um, uh, end piece here and they just put put a piece of metal on the end of a needle for example and they'll take a needle and put the needle on the end here and make sure the two needles touch exactly in the center so you know that these are exactly aligned right so it's not too difficult to do um, I'd have to get, I'm going to have to get another lathe to show you some of that stuff. So just bear with me here. So, so that's basically the parts of this lathe, right? Um, and you just undo this to move this around and tighten it, but you've got to have a tapered end bit here to actually uh, use this properly. Um, I have various chucks I've, I've used that are tapered, uh, and they've got a Morse, Morse taper of three, I think is what I use to do that. And I've actually shown how to make a taper in one of my videos as well if you're looking for and my lathe videos look that stuff up so the other part of the lathe here is the belting for the lathe this is a lathe belt here so what I do is I go to um, a store up here in Canada called Markswork Warehouse and they sell boot leather so boot leather laces and I take the boot leather lace and I sew it together with fishing line I use a five pound fishing line I'm able to to make the holes on the end here and weave that and there's a, a video I've made on how to do this and how to make the uh, these belts for your lathe and I get it's a very comprehensive video I made a few years ago on how to do that um, you got to make sure this is these are well oiled too um, like I said earlier with the oil I use and you make sure that that this is well oiled as well because without the, the proper oiling these things will wear out and you don't want them wearing out so this is easily adjustable as well um, and these are not easy to get a hold of. Uh, if you're going to buy one of these pulley systems here, you're going to probably pay four to five hundred dollars just for the pulley system. Now, they've gotten more expensive. Um, the the actual motor in the back, like I said, is a sewing machine motor, and they're easy to get. You can go on Amazon to get a sewing machine motor, and you're good to go. So, so that's 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 my advice: is to use, to drive it with a sewing machine motor. It's dead easy, and these motors won't cost you. It'll cost you around 20 bucks to get a decent sewing machine motor and you just get an L bracket here and fashion it onto the this this Burrell stand right so that's this basic lathe so let me get another lathe and show you some more advanced stuff so this is also a Bowley lathe and it's also on a Burrell stand 
right? And it also has a very nice counter shaft here. And this gives me the ratio that I need to get the torque to use the lathe. I'm going to plug this one in so you can hear its use um, as opposed to seeing its use. Make sure I've got power on there. So there you go. So this is a, a, a Bowley lathe, really nice lathe. So this lathe does have a tip over tool rest and that's super handy to just be working on your work and then to tip it out of the way like that and then do more work on the lathe. So the oil of the spindles here is done through these little kind of caps here. So you pull that up, you fill it with oil. And again, I use this, uh, this uh, 0W20 synthetic oil. And this was a, uh, Tasconi is a gentleman that lives in New Mexico and he's an engineering guy that's a watchmaker and he makes videos and and he called me up once on a Sunday and we chatted about what oil to use on lays and and he told me to use W he told me to use uh, synthetic he said is what you should use so 0W20 synthetic he said so he's an expert I actually bought his videos years ago and he just I was emailing him back and forth and he said eventually he said just call me let's just talk so he's getting sick of going back and forth with emails and so was I so so that's good so this here is a call call it holding tailstock so this is a thing of beauty to have one of these um, so I'll show you exactly how what that means so I'm going to do this actively so if I've got a piece of metal here um, that I want to put in this tailstock here let me just grab a piece of metal um, let's say I'm working a piece of metal in this lathe and this is my piece of metal I'm going to work in a lathe I'm going to measure that to the right size with my collets here I'm just going to do this really quickly so I don't waste too much time and pull out a collet so here we go I've got that generally the right size you don't want when you're when you're squeezing the metal you don't want it to be tight and you don't want it to be too loose so if you're thinking of side shake it just has a very a little bit of side shake there so and you're going to put this into the I'm just going to put this in like this you can put it in like this first or you can just put this in first and then put the piece of metal in so just like before there's a groove in the collet and that groove will find home it's usually on the top or the bottom of the lathe bed um, or the lathe the, the uh, headstock rather so I think this is in the bottom let me look again yeah so this is aligned with the bottom and these are nice collets and there's a WW8 lathe and then I just take my spindle and roll that into place like that and so that's not compressing yet, but it will once I get the piece of metal in. So I would take this piece of metal and put this in. Um, and this tailstock is probably in the way right now. So I have to just back this out and get this out of the way for me to put this piece of metal in. And I'll do that. And there we go. And it can go pretty deep. When I'm making a, um, when I was making a pivot before, I actually used a big piece of metal and only had a little tiny bit sticking out. If you're going to work the, the material, you don't want that much sticking out because there's going to be a little shaking that goes on. And there's technique that you would use to, to prevent that, right? So for aligning it. So this, this jobby doohickey would go in the other lathe, the one I just put in because there's like a number three Morse taper here and you stick that in the end. And then this thing in my jobby doohickey actually would hold a collet. So if I took this and I did that and you see that's holding a collet right now, and I'm able to turn that in like this and all of a sudden I've got myself a call call it holding tailstock with just a normal tailstock with a Morse taper but this is just another tool I have of my millions of tools <laughs> for the uh, that, that allows me to use this with another type of lathe but this here is a call it hold tailstock with a micrometer on the back end so let's have a look at that all right so right now everything's on my lap so if I sneeze it's gonna go all over the place so, so, so this is the collet holding tailstock. So I would put the right collet in here that I'd want. So say I wanted to hold a piece of material steady on this side. I could hold a steady here on this side and then work with this collet on that side. Or I could hold my piece here on this side and have this side drilling this way. So I could use it, the headstock to drill into the tail um, and hold the piece of material in the tailstock on this side. So again, um, this tailstock if I just do that, it's pulling, it's drawing the collet inward. If you look at that, I'll try to do it fast as I can. And then when I get to the point, there we go. Let's say I've got my, my material in there tight. I would loosen that, right? And now I've got this micrometer feature I have here. So this is a stop here. 
I would be adjusting the stop with my screwdriver to the whatever my micrometer level I wanted, right? So if I had if I had to um, do some work and I wanted it to be at this level here, right? Then I would take this micrometer here and move that along until I had that that specific uh, distance, right? So and that allows me to do a very fine adjustment here on the end stop here like that. So that's pretty handy to have. Um, and I don't use a lot, but it is handy. So if you're doing something like you're trying to deal with jeweling and you're making maybe a jewel setting and you want to make sure that the, the jewel setting is the right depth, um, you could use this micrometer to measure the depth that needs to be and then have that pushing in to this level here. So you'd be adjusting this with a screw. So pretty darn handy. Um, so if I, I do recommend if you're going to buy a lathe, if you can get a lathe with a tail stock that holds collets, then you're you're a better man than me. <laughs> so I recommend that you do that. And again, this this here only works when you use this here, right? So and it stops it, right? So you're using this part as the micrometer, right? And it's the adjustment of this end, the the, the front end of this this tail stock here for minute work right or very detailed work um, and I'm not going to get into that kind of work so again go to my channel and go to the lathe category or section and you'll see a lot of videos on lathe work okay that I've done over the years so so that's that so and that's the tip over tool rest this is so darn handy um, it's it's unbelievable now in this lathe here I've got two different types of belt neither of them are leather and these belts did work and so I decided not to change them out. So this belt in the back here is made of a special type of plastic and you actually you melt this together and if you look right here that's where the melting would happen so it's right up top here that's where they were melting together so you end up taking a knife and putting it into a vise you heat the knife up you take this here you put these on both sides of the knife and you slide them off together and stick them together that's how you do it so the knife actually provides the heat to melt this and you slide it off and do it so it works quite well and these belts are, are nice this belt I can't remember where I got this belt but I got this belt maybe it came with this lathe um, and I haven't I've never changed it because it, it works right what is it if it if it still works then don't try to fix it right because what are you fixing so so if you can possibly get a, a lathe with a uh, a tailstock that call that holds collets like this one here then you're way ahead of everyone else and you can do many more things with this kind of lathe uh, you'll be wanting for for that capability if you can't you can find these which are basically trying to trying to emulate this uh, collet holding tailstock here but not doing a great job at it but good enough and it's got a Morse taper on here and it's relatively centered um, when I do a, when I work on a piece um, I'll take a a long piece of pegwood and I'll ride that piece of pegwood over the metal underneath very lightly when I'm spinning it and that and that'll allow me to center my piece while this is slightly uh, loose or it's not really tight yet so this like this so and then once I get it sort of not I get it kind of centered um, like this and then I tighten this up so you can you can use a wax chuck uh, instead of this uh, chuck and a wax chuck allows you to do that. There's all kinds of attachments for a lathe as well. Um, if you're going to do some serious lathe work in the future, then you should get yourself a set of cross slides. Um, and maybe I'm going to be really brave here and bring out a set of cross slides and show you what they look like. So again, when you buy a lathe, if you can manage to have collets already, and you can get two collets and two sewing needles that are absolutely straight, you can take your lathe here, you can put a needle on one side and a needle on the other, and then bring the tail piece um, up to the headstock, the tail stock up to the headstock, and make sure the needles are actually touching at the very tip, like that. So, the funny thing, I was going to do that, but I only have one needle I know is straight, <laughs> so it doesn't work with one needle. So you do that with two needles, just to make sure your, your, your lathe is straight. Now, with some of these lathes, and again, people can correct me that are, that are smarter on the use of lathes than I am, um, some of these lays were actually cut from one piece of metal. So this is this the tailstock and headstock are one piece, and they were they were fashioned from one piece or machined from one piece of metal, and then separated after to make sure that they are absolutely accurate. So that's that's necessary. I've I also have a video online that shows me stripping down the the, 
the headstock on a lathe um, for maintenance. So I took that and I took a, I, I basically got rid of any corrosion that was on the spindle um, and cleaned it all up and then reassembled and oiled it um, uh, to make it work again. So as I told you earlier that you can get a chip sometimes in here. I think that's a that's a chip there, but the chip was caused by somebody trying to open the screw here, which loosens the, the uh, spindle here, or loosens the pulley here, um, and they chip the lathe. So normally I'll run a lathe on the last part of the pulley anyway. So and I've got the counter shaft here so I can play with which counter shaft pulley I'm going to use as well right and I've got my large pulley going to my smaller pulley which gives me more torque so this is spinning slower than this which gives me more torque down here so it's all physics it's mass so good get your torqueometer and your mass and figure out what the ratios are but this works perfectly and I've cut a lot of parts with this I've made balance staffs with 0 0.09 millimeter pivots on the end with this Boley lathe. So they're so very, very accurate. I hear they're 0 0.001 accuracy on this thing. Maybe there's another zero, but I think it's at least 0 0.001 accuracy on one of these lathes to allow you to cut very fine parts on it. So, so these are cross slides here. And I'm just gonna just show you very quickly how this might be used. So this set of cross slides, I'm going to just shift this over so I don't have to redo it, maybe. Maybe if I'm lucky. No, I'm not going to be lucky. I would normally use this in for the cross slides as well, to install the cross slides. But the set of cross slides go on the lathe, and they go on like this, and you're able to use the cross slides to do some very nice precision work. So let me just install them for you. So to install the cross slides, just to show you I'm a nice guy, I'm going to show you hopefully show you how this is done let me look down here and I've got my lathe bed here and I want to make sure that this goes into the lathe bed this way so I've got to swing this all the way around the other way so let me see if I can do that without cutting myself I'm always poking myself with this lathe by the way so it's good like that and like this there we go so the cross slides would go on like this. Let me see, do I have that right? Yeah. And there we go. So that's how I'd fit on the set of cross slides. I gotta adjust my camera in a second here. Just hang on. Like this. Let me just adjust the camera. So there's the cross slide sitting there. And here I'd have my cutting piece. I don't have that out right now, but let me go get it. Let me go get it. I gotta finish this. And the chucks I showed you earlier are actually called split wire chucks. As you can see down below here, those are split wire chucks um, for Webster Whittacombe lathes. I was trying to look at the names of some stuff. I wanted to see what the name of this was. So I'm being nice here. So, but there's all kinds of... If you get that book, it, it has all the right names. You don't have to rely on me telling you the wrong stuff. So I'm just trying to find... Oh, there we go. So it says slide rest cutter setup for cutting a thread. So the slide rest... So that's a slide rest, I guess, and that's the cutter thread, and that's the exact same piece I have right here if you're watching down on my book here. I'm wearing shorts today, so if you saw some hairy legs earlier, I apologize. Um, this is all thread cutting. Um, I've done a lot of this, by the way. Um, I referred to this book before. Uh, in cutting jewels, I've used a lot of these different types of carbide gravers. To cut jewels so you also need a graver so let's just pretend that's just a s slide rest on there and not try to look that up right now so you got your slide you got your slide rest and oh, let me get that in here so here's your graver here and this is a non handheld graver this would be held by this device right here and when you screw that down on the top it tightens this graver down so i put the graver in uh, like this here for cutting so the edge would be upward, um, and I'd put it in like this. Then I would tighten down the graver like this. And it depends on what I want to do with the material, right? So let's say I'm just doing a fine cut and taking a bit of material off, and I want the graver to be kind of at this angle here. And I would just tighten that in like that um, into this. And then this rest here, as I move this forward, it goes this way. You see how that works? So that allows me to adjust where the graver actually hits the material here to cut with it, right? So, and it's just, you just basically do it that way.
right? Now there's something that I don't like and it looks like it's too high, which means I should have taken the bed off on the bottom. So I'm gonna do that because I don't want you guys to get the wrong impression. So this would come off, so I wouldn't need to have this on anymore. So of course I'm gonna to have to take time later on to redo all this. As I drop this down, it's gonna drop down the, the, all the springs and everything will come down on it and I take that off and then this would be attached down below here like that right and that gives and this brace is the brace that that is against the lathe bed like this so you'd stick that through like this onto the lathe and now you can see how this cutter is is centered uh, where the collet would be right so let me see if i can put this together for a second here it's always tricky um, this goes like that this goes the spring goes on the inside like this and it goes like this so that's how it works um, and I've got to sort of feed this upward like that and then hold that on the bottom uh, normally you're not making a video and talking while you're doing this but today is a unique day so just gonna see if I can find the threads there we go there's the threading so I would put it in like this and now you'll see that this is an H&R, by the way, in case you're curious, but it's an H&R um, cross slide. So there, so I'd center that and I could make sure I got the right movement on here. So that little plate I showed you in the bottom needs to rest smoothly against the lathe bed. And that, that ensures I've got it at ex this part back here. I'm sure that I've got the, this at exactly a 90 degree angle. I'm just murmuring and mumbling. Jobby doohickey. Need to say that too. So there we go. So now I've got this here and I can move this left, right and center, but I want to lock this down. So I'm preparing or trying to get the right angle to cut this at. So let's say that's the right angle and I'm going to lock this down. I need a smaller post than this, but this would, this would effectively lock down the top bed. So that's not moving anymore by turning that in the back here. So that's the cross slide locked down and then I can do fine movement on this way. Um, and that's super fine movement this way, or I can move the whole darn thing and I can do fine movement on it this way as well, right? I find that once I get it to this position here and I want to do some fine cutting, I can use this with my hands and it works really well as well. If I want to go deeper, right, on the part, I can cut deeper on the part while I'm moving it back and forth, right? So you get used to using this and you're, this is a call it, obviously a call it in there and a part of some sort and you're working the part that way. So let me just turn that around so you can see it from this side. There you go. That's from this side. So you're basically moving it this way here and you're cutting the part and moving it in and then moving it in, in and out. So up on this particular um, cross slide here, you do have a zero. So you can move this until you absolutely hit zero right there. And as you can see, there's there's gradient marks here that allow you to see, make sure that that's exactly at zero when you tighten this thing down. Um, it wasn't when I did it, but you can make sure it is. So, so that's that. Um, let me see if this thing will spin for me. Again, just like the other lathe, um, it has a pin in the back which locks in so you can get, for if you're making stems or doing something else, it can lock you in at a certain size. So I'm just gonna go down to my foot pedal here. It's always available and spin this baby. So that's the lathe spinning and you can see the counter shafts here doing their thing and it's all down to a sewing machine motor in the back and you regulate the speed of this um, with your foot i think there is a, a switch that's the same switch they use for the for a drill that has an automatic speed on it is the exact same component they use in those very high-end dental foot switches i have one of those under my foot right now I can spin this pretty fast. If I'm cutting, I would be spinning it around this fast to cut. So maybe that's uh, 1, 1500 RPMs, maybe 1000 RPMs. Depending on the material you're cutting, um, it depends on how fast you go. And you just watch the material coming off the part to make sure it's coming off in shavings. It's not chattering itself to come off. So, so you can watch that and you can usually get the right, right speed by eyeballing that. So. So that, these are cross slides for a lathe, so they're very nice. And it's, 
you got to get yourself a set of cross slides and like I said before I would lock unlock this and make sure this is set to exactly zero I'd look ahead in the front there down there straight down and make sure that's at zero and then I can adjust this I can adjust the cutting angle with my graver um, whatever cutting angle I want um, so it's pretty handy so I've used this many times over the years and you got to get yourself a set of cross lights they're not cheap you're likely to pay five six hundred dollars for a set of cross lights that's Canadian so you make it away with 400 US uh, for cross slides um, but I highly recommend buying a set of cross slides for your lathes and that kind of completes it uh, there's other add-ons that I do have for lathes like face plates and all kinds of other stuff that you can get for a lathe just buy the book that I told you about earlier the watchmakers the modern watchmakers lathe and how to use it it's by Archie B Perkins good old Archie Archie B Perkins good old Archie B Perkins so I'm gonna kind of end this video right now I think so I think you've seen enough now um, you would not have a tailpiece on while you've got the cross slides on by the way you're, you're doing a totally different thing here you'd have the tail piece off to the side I was trying to take this off here so I could pull this up here and get get that back and I, I noticed before that the sizing was off and that's why it was off because I there's a groove in here that helps you actually match this properly when you're putting it in and you turn that and that allows you to match it into there and then when you put this back together put the spring in like this and put this in like this and then you put the whole thing together you can actually pull it up a bit and just turn the top part to get it going and not have to mess with the bottom part until you get it almost all the way locked in and then once you've done this then you can get your tip over tool rest and this is a tip over tool rest these are handy as hell okay you have to get a tip over tool rest to do work because you're you're doing the work you're measuring you're getting your doozy m gauge out maybe and measuring the end piece i'll show you that too in a second because it's a priceless tool to use uh, and then and then you're you're flipping this out of the way measuring cutting measuring cutting so without that you're you're nobody you're nobody and this is a doozy m gauge this one's made in england it's from lme whoever the heck they were and you're measuring your part on this side and this is a small to big right the ratio so you're measuring the part and you're looking up here and this top line is all millimeters so I'll be like 10 millimeters would be right there so if I'm just let me just see if I can get a close-up so that's at nine right there that's 10 millimeters right there so I'll start shaving down a part like when I was making a pivot for a watch and I'll say take a piece of five millimeter stock blued steel and have to work it down to three right so I'll just do that and I'll work it down to three and use the doozy M gauge to quickly measure and so your tip over tool wrist gets out of the way you measure the part you flip it back right and this would of course be a lot closer to the part and because this if you want to face off a piece of material which is taking this piece of material and then just cutting the end perfectly flat then you're able to turn this sideways like that and then you get it at it this at a little bit of an angle like this and tighten it and then you can get your tool rest here you can loosen that and put this at a bit of an angle and tighten it or you can keep this where it is it just depends on the whole angle and set that up perfectly to actually face off the material with your tip over tool rest get out of the way do some measurement you're good to go you're off and running off and running i tell you so these these little things are indispensable so that's my video on this today um, so good luck uh, make sure you get a lathe that's one company this is boley 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 don't try to buy a ww um lathe bed and then try to match it to two different types of headstocks and tailstocks you're going to get in trouble find a lathe that that's from the same family from the same cousins they're not even cousins they're brother and actually they're two brothers they're twins so try to find that if you can find a counter shaft you're 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 good if you can't find a counter shaft and get yourself maybe a bigger motor you can buy vintage lathe motors i got a few of those as well but i found that these little little sewing machine motor motors extremely reliable work really well and they're easy to jig up on your lathe and <clears throat> so that's it for today thanks for watching if you have any more lathe questions uh, please let me know there's lots of videos out there tasconi has got a whole series on lathes so do others and remember, be safe using a lathe and make sure that you take your time 
and start off by learning how to cut with your, your graver, right? So take your graver, learn how to cut. I'll show you what a graver looks like just before I close off. All right, so this is a graver. This is an old hardened steel graver, so you can get bit better gravers than that. I get carbide gravers, but this graver will cut. It's probably four, it's probably uh, four millimeters on the end, I think. Also good for cleaning your fingernails. <laughs> If you need that, right? And I think I do. This thumbnail needs cleaning. Anyway, that's a graver. So you can always keep your gravers super sharp so they can be used. I think I cut, I think I peel this one back to make it into a cutaway graver to cut parts away. So I think that's why it's so thin on the end because I use this to cut parts away. So, so that's what a graver would look like. And you're putting that in your hand like this and you're using it on your tip over tool rest and you're getting not much of it sticking over otherwise you'll get chatter with your part right so you just want a little tiny bit so when you set this thing up you got to set it up perfect so buy the book as i told you watch a lot of videos on how to use a lathe i've got other videos if you look on my on my channel you'll see one of the first sections of my channel i just redid the whole darn thing for you folks it's on lathes the very first one is on lathes so go get lathed